Hi, my name is Lexi Cannon, and today I will be demonstrating the process of inking a skull study for my life drawing course here at SCAD. The first step when it comes to inking a full study is to sketch out the basic forms and shapes in pencil. Today, I will be inking a human skull study that I have already kind of mapped out as we had to work from a skeletal model on ground rather than from a picture. The goal for this assignment is realistic accuracy with a reasonable amount of artistry, which basically means you want to make it look anatomically correct while taking your own creative liberties with how the ink is applied. I'm hoping to use the mark making technique known as cross hatching for my study today, which will help give it volume and a bit of texture. Here you can see where I used this technique for a master copy from Bernard Siegfried Albinus for the same class. Notice how the intersecting hatched lines make a wide range of values when you're really only using black ink and the white of the paper. You can also see where I used water to wash out and soften some of these lines, which is something I will be doing today too. To complete this study, I'm going to need my completed sketches in graphite, a bottle of ink, my ink pen along with its range of alternate pen nibs, a cup of water, and two different sized watercolor brushes. The ink and pen are for making the main marks on my paper. Each nib attachment for the pen is suited for different purposes, with each offering a different line thickness and quality based on the size. This really allows me to darken up broad areas of the paper one moment while creating small details the next. Once I've begun inking, I'm going to start off with the main lines of the skull. The cranial cap, the outline of the teeth and the jaw, and the top seven vertebrae of the spine need to be well-defined, as they are the main components of the figure in its entirety. Once these details are hammered out, I can go back in and start gradually adding value in the form of cross-hatching. I keep in mind a singular light source, and try to work in broad areas rather than honing in on one space to avoid over-detailing. This helps keep the value composition of the piece balanced. Once I feel satisfied with the ink work on my skulls, it's time to move on to ink wash. This is basically for adding even more subtle value to my skulls, rather than the harsh line and shading of the cross hatching alone. This step requires a bit of tact and restraint. I have to be careful that I don't over smudge the ink work that I just spent so much time on, but I also want to see the range of grayscale values that can come out of washing away my lines. Time is definitely the biggest factor here, as is patience. As an animation major, I feel like my original love is ink on paper. Every visual story told begins with a simple thumbnail in a sketchbook, and that's where I found my passion. Doing studies like this is both a window into those starting moments, but also a great way to hone my skills and practice the basics as I continue to grow as an artist. And yeah, that was my process for inking a school study. Thanks for watching.